Somehow, a microphone has been crammed inside this tiny earbud. And I've always wanted to know what it looks like. So today, we're tearing open an earbud and looking at the microscopic marvel that is a micro-electromechanical microphone. I think we've all seen a microphone. You know, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but are generally pretty large. Too large to put inside an earbud, certainly. There are miniature mics called electret microphones, and you'll find these inside smaller mics, like the kind you pin to your shirt. These are typically electrostatic microphones, which use a thin plastic membrane to pick up the sound waves. Fundamentally, they're a lot like the big microphones, just miniaturized. But even the smallest of these are still too large for an earbud. We need to get smaller. We need an absolutely tiny device fabricated from silicon wafers, just like the microchips that control it. So this is a $10 pair of earbuds, and we're gonna try to pry it open and take a look at the microphone inside. You can see a small hole down here at the bottom. That's the air port for the microphone. Once we cut the case open, we can see the speaker, the tactile buzzer, and the charging magnet in the top section of the earbud. And if we flip it over, we can see a long PCB that holds some microchips and circuitry, as well as our microphone. See that little metal can down at the bottom? Yeah, that's the microphone. It's only about three millimeters long, and the actual microphone itself is even smaller inside of that can. We can take a closer look by removing this from the PCB, and that's easily done by desoldering on a hot plate and removing the metal can that's protecting the microphone. What we're left with is a tiny little PCB, a microchip, and our microphone, all crammed within that three millimeter package. We'll revisit the chip in a few minutes, but first let's look at the microphone itself. Using an optical microscope, we can see that the mic is basically a square block of silicon with a pattern of holes on the top. There's a central hole in the middle and two gold bonding wires which make electrical contact. The rainbow colors that we see are light diffracting off very thin films. So from that, we can probably guess that there are at least a few layers of thin silicon or silicon dioxide on the device. That's about all we can see on the optical microscope. So let's move over to the scanning electron microscope for a closer look. And man, I don't know about you, but this just looks so cool. MEMS devices always look amazing under the electron microscope. From a top-down view, we can see that it's just under a millimeter wide, about 700 micrometers. Those two gold bonding wires definitely make electrical contact on different layers of the device. One bond wire seems to go to an internal layer, while the other bond wire goes onto this extra rounded layer that's visible on top of the array of holes. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes, but it's almost certainly a layer of polysilicon that's been deposited on top. The circular array of holes is much easier to see under the SEM than optical, but it's not entirely clear what's going on. Are they holes? Are they just dimples? Is it something else? If we move to the center of the device, we can see another hole which seems to punch into an internal cavity and also seems to expose another layer underneath. Things are a little easier to see from an angled view. The rough edges on the side of the device are from a process called dicing. Thousands of these microphones are fabricated on a single silicon wafer and then cut up into individual chips. In any case, if we go back to that central hole, it's now really obvious that there's a second layer hiding underneath. And these circular array of holes appear to be dimples and not actually through holes. I really want to break this open to take a look inside, but before we destroy it, let's take a look at the rest of the circuit board. Off to the side is that small microchip connected by the two gold bond wires. Unfortunately, we really can't see anything as it is because it's covered in a blob of glue. We do see three additional wires that leave the microchip and provide connectivity to the rest of the earbud. I spent a little time off camera scraping and etching the glue and we can see the microchip a little better now. There are a number of metal interconnects on top of the chip and smaller features in the silicon below the top layer. The features are pretty big, so it's likely this was produced on an older semiconductor fab. And it's probably also a bunch of analog processing rather than digital. And I'm assuming it's just responsible for pre-amplifying the tiny signal coming out of the microphone. I'm going to stop for a moment and take a closer look at those electrical connections because I think it's a really neat process. These are called bond wires and they're formed from a very thin gold wire. The gold is melted at the end to form a ball and then it's smushed down onto the device. Usually a combination of heat and ultrasound are used to actually stick that ball to the substrate. This wire bonding process is super common and is the main way to connect microchips to the outside world. Okay, it's time. 
I want to see inside the microphone, and the only way I know how to do that is to just break it open. So I managed to break an edge while keeping the top surface relatively intact, and we can see a few interesting details. There is very obviously a second layer underneath the first. And while the top surface is just an array of dimples, the second layer looks to be an array of holes that go all the way through. Both layers are extremely thin, probably only a few micrometers each. Just to give a bit of scale, this is how thick a human hair is next to the microphone. It's a really, really tiny device with really small features, much smaller than a human hair. We can also clearly see that there's a large cavity underneath these layers. So what's going on here? Well, it's a microphone, which needs to turn sound and pressure waves into an electrical signal. Traditional microphones do this by using a thin membrane, which vibrates when sound waves pass by. But this MEMS microphone is too small to glue any kind of membrane onto. So instead, they fabricated the membrane directly out of the silicon. The top dimpled surface is that membrane. Sound waves hit the top surface and cause it to vibrate and deflect by very tiny amounts. Silicon is a hard, brittle, glassy-like material, but when it's thin enough, it'll deflect just like a plastic membrane. But we need to convert that vibration into an electrical signal. To do that, we apply a voltage between the top and bottom layers. They're electrically isolated from each other, so it forms a little capacitor between the two layers. As the top membrane vibrates, the distance between those two layers changes, which alters the capacitance of the capacitor. This tiny change is detected and amplified by that microchip off to the side, and then transferred to the main processor in the earbud. The bottom layer is directly connected to the bond wire, so they probably used a highly conductive silicon wafer as the substrate. In contrast, the top layer is connected by this kind of rounded layer on top. This is probably a highly doped polysilicon layer. Polysilicon is just another form of silicon that can be deposited during later processing steps, but it has a more characteristic rounded profile, instead of the nice crisp clean lines like we see on the lower layers. And underneath it all is that deep cavity. Now, I'm not an audio engineer at all, so I don't really know the purpose of this, but I believe you need a certain amount of space underneath or inside of a microphone just to let the air waves propagate and resonate. If we look at the sidewalls, we can see this really neat ridge structure. This is characteristic of a process called deep reactive ion etching, or DRY. Dry probably deserves a whole video on its own because it's a really cool technique. But in short, it's a way to etch very deep and straight profiles in silicon. Dry is performed in a number of steps, and each step leaves behind one of these ridges. So we can see that this wafer was subjected to dozens of etching steps to get through the full thickness. Dry is really cool because it's considered an anisotropic etching process, meaning that it can etch very deeply while still retaining relatively straight wall profiles. And that's different from an isotropic etch, which etches uniformly in all directions. So yeah, dry is super cool and it's neat to be able to see this whole cavity being carved out by this one specific process. And that is basically the microphone. While it's a lot simpler than a MEMS device like an accelerometer or a gyroscope, it's still a super cool little device and provides honestly shockingly good audio quality for how small it is. Pretty much every cell phone and earbud at this point is using a MEMS microphone, and the audio quality is perfectly good. And it's all thanks to these tiny little silicon devices that are smaller than a grain of rice. I've been working on a lot of neat projects lately, and in fact, I've been so focused on them that I forgot to get a sponsor for this video. So instead, let me take a minute to thank all the folks that support me on Patreon. Sponsors and ad revenue definitely help make this channel possible, but the consistent support of Patreon really helps smooth out the up and down months. It also lets me work on longer and more ambitious projects. Patrons get access to my electron microscope images, and I post monthly about what kind of projects I'm working on, debugging, troubleshooting issues, recent successes and failures, and upcoming videos. Huge thanks to all the folks supporting my channel. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. Oh, and if you like this video, you'll probably like this other one about MEMS accelerometers and gyroscopes. It's a deep dive into how these really cool pieces of MEMS technology works, and it's inside of pretty much every single cell phone.